Dawn, thanks so much for having us. Welcome to the pool. Thank and you. This is so exciting. Tell me about your shop. So this is my pop-up shop uh, on Monmouth Street in the Seven Dials, and I can't quite believe that it's happening. So this this location is the kind of location that you could only ever aspire to having if you were a clothing brand, but I've got it for a few weeks. So we had a launch party last night, and I just kept having these really out-of-body moments where I was like, this is my party, these are my clothes, this is my thing happening. So, I, I mean, it's awesome. I've only been online up until now. Mm -hmm. So people see this stuff online, but they're a bit nervous to buy. So I've had loads of people coming in being like, I've been looking at this for ages. And, and they can actually touch it. Touch and, it and try yeah. it on and buy it, which is great. And they do buy it, which is the best bit. Okay, so take us back a bit. I mean, your love of vintage is well documented. You've done TV shows, you've written a book, mm -hmm. there's the columns and obviously the label. When when did it all begin? Well, I think, I think it was always there. So I was brought up in Guernsey and my aunt and uncle who brought me up, they were, uh, they lived in London in the 60s and my uncle's side of the family were furriers by trade and so dressmaking was a huge part of what, what they did and my auntie dressed windows on Bond Street and so all throughout my teenage years they'd always talk about the 60s in London and the fashion and the charm and the way that clothes used to be made and you know the style icons, They're all of our style icons like Twiggy and Jean Shrimpton and um, it was always talked about, clothes were always something that were quite nostalgic in our house and my auntie would kind of show me her old vintage clothes and there was always a story behind everything and so I think I always I loved that but as a teenage girl in the 90s on Guernsey I didn't have my own yeah, what style. was the outlet there yeah I mean I was a disaster I, I always wanted to dress differently but never got it right mm. and so then I would try and dress like everybody else and never feel like I had any sense of style. And that kind of went on into probably my mid-20s right. when I just thought, I'm just not happy in what I'm wearing. Mm -hmm. I'm just spending loads of money on clothes that I don't feel represent like who I am in. at all. Yeah. So then I was on my bike one day in Parsons Green and cycled past this little vintage shop. And I went in and it was a mess. And it stank a little bit of like that mustiness, which I've come to love, like an old book. and. I just found these like 70s and 60s dresses that were way, way different to anything that I had in my wardrobe. And I bought them and I wore them and I thought, this is it, this is my style. Really? I never looked back. You yeah. had like a, a proper I had proper epiphany. Moment, yeah. Is that the word? Yeah. Epif epiphany, yeah. An I epiphany? Had a, I had a fashion epiphany. Well, I just finally felt like um, I, wasn't, I wasn't wearing what everybody else was wearing. Yeah. And that was just a massive relief. And also, like I said before, like, that nostalgia of clothes. I like thinking, where's this dress been before me? Like, whose was it? What was she doing the day she wore this? And, mm. you know, I love all that. So with that in mind, tell me about Bob. I mean, you know, the label itself and designing and the look of the label. How did that all come about? Well, so obviously my first passion is the vintage stuff. And it's, but the new designs, I'd find, I'd find a dress that I love. So one of my designs, the, bu the Buzz, I'll show it to you in a bit. The, the Buzz dress was inspired by this five dollar dress that I found scrunched, scrunched up on the floor in a flea market and the fabric was horrible there was just something in the shape of it that I thought this could be better and so suddenly I have rebuilt it into this new style so a lot of the complaints about vintage are the fact that people don't like the fabrics because there's mm -hmm. a lot of polyester and the other one is that people can't find sizes that they like so my whole ethos with Bob is I'll take those classic styles make them in lovely fabrics and in all sizes and so it just kind of opens up that style for yeah. people um, and also I just, I think because of my upbringing, of the fact that I was brought up by people who make clothes, I really wanted to do it. You know, I'm not a technical designer, I didn't study it, and I can't pretend to be, but what, I know what I like. So I'll put like a vintage dress on a mannequin, and I'll say, I want the bottom off that, I want the shoulders off that, I want the waist off that, and I just blend them all together and suddenly I've got my perfect dress. Um, and that's kind of how I'm doing it, but I just, I couldn't resist not doing my own stuff. And what's the look of the label? I mean, because it, it is very distinctive and it also feels like it's speaking to a kind of customer that maybe isn't catered for in other places. I think that, well, how would I describe the look of the label? Like, it's obviously vintage inspired, but a lot of people do that. And I think what's different about Bob is that I've tried to mix in enough modern vibes so that it doesn't feel like you're in fancy dress. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think... Because that costume thing's scary for people, And isn't I can't it? bear yeah. it. And, I, you know, I love vintage, but people... I don't like twee at mm. all, and I don't like pin-up fancy dress. And I don't think... That doesn't feel like natural dressing to me at all. I don't want to look like I'm going to a, a fancy dress party mm. in a costume. Yeah. So it's taking the really nice parts of 50s, 60s and 70s and the 80s and just working out how to make that really wearable. Mm. So, you know, my skirts, I love them being really high on the waist and then really full, which is... I a, mean, like, amazing. Yeah, just really perfect. 50s shape, yeah. but just kind of just 
not dress up. And what about uh, the future, you know, for, for vintage? Do you think that it's a trend that will continue? Well, I think what you realise is that most of the high street is inspired by something that's happened before. So vintage is everywhere, but it's just kind of fun to have an original. So I think people are starting to realise that the originals are more unique and probably really well made. And it's really nice to walk into a room and say, no one else has got this dress. And I think that's the trend. That's what people are finding exciting about it. So I think, I think it's around for keeps. And the clothes are going to get older and older and older, which is going to make it even more special.